everybody, how's it going? Welcome to my thought message number two. The first one, I just opened up a little bit about what my experience was like when I passed away very briefly. <laughs> it wasn't anything like severely tragic. I didn't know I was allergic to bees, so by the time I got help, it was too late. But it was an experience all in itself, so if you're interested in that, be sure to check it out. But this one is a little, uh, I'm flipping the script a bit. I want to help you because this is like the only thing that I really have like a shit ton of experience with dealing. Unfortunately, I can handle death like a champ. I've experienced it so many times. Um, don't want to get all into it, but it started in high school. My friend was killed in 10th grade crossing the train tracks. They were picking up pieces of him for days. It was horrific. He was only like, I think, 15 at the time, 14, 15. And that was my first ex real experience with death. Like, a friend, and I was just really young. And a year or two after that, uh, another friend of mine committed suicide around Halloween, hung themselves, unfortunately. And then, uh, that, that was even before high school ended. And then, college years my grandpa passed away which was a big loss I lost my fiance in Fallujah um, and every single person that I bonded with and became friends with in most of my 20s is now gone my grandma two of my aunts my uncle like I just I've lost I've had two stillbirths and a couple miscarriages I just I've been through it I've been through all aspects of it, whether it was somebody you grew up with, or a friend, family member, a love. So why not put this tragedy and wisdom to good use out there? Because I think you get lost, especially if it's your first time dealing with a big death, or even the first couple times, and especially if it's spaced out and you haven't had a death in a few years, it can hit you like a ton of bricks. It derails your life, and it, I just want to help you um, skip that part. So this is my advice. Um, take it with a grain of salt because everybody's different. Everyone's going to have different needs, and hopefully you take something out of this that will help you. Um, it's your journey. It's, there's no time frame for grief. There's no getting over it with the snap of your fingers. And you could still work the steps and lose your shit every day, and that's fine. We put so much pressure on ourselves to be these titans, and it's not realistic. So let's talk about it. I think the most easiest way to express, I like to do this when somebody passes away usually. I do it during the wake. The awake is when you view the body before the funeral. Go up and say your last respects. I slip a letter in the coffin of everybody that I love and a piece of my jewelry. That's something I've always done. Um, it's like everything that you couldn't say in your goodbye, everything you wish that um, they knew, and you know, just a thank you for being in my life, and I'm sorry that they're gone, and what I'm gonna miss about them. It's just like a personal release, um, which isn't always easy to do, especially when someone first dies. Sometimes this leather part comes later. And you can always take it to the grave or just burn it when you're done. Release it up. It doesn't really matter when you write the letter. I just feel like getting it out, especially if you missed a goodbye or if there was turbulent times between you or you just weren't able to articulate in life while you were, they were here how they meant to you. Writing songs is very therapeutic. Um, listening to songs and crying it out really helped me a lot. Um, poems, some of the best poems ever written is from the deepest pits of people's agony and hell. <sighs> let it out, let it flow, no one's got to see it. Journaling every day um, helped me, like just keeping track of my thoughts and, and you know, things I wanted to remember and things I was thinking about. That really helped me, especially when I did go to counseling. Eventually, I was able to give my journal to my counselor and they were able to help me a lot quicker because they were able to process my thoughts. 
um, and know me a little bit better. And I do recommend therapy um, for deaf, big deafs. I don't really feel like most people have the capability to process what life is like without that hole being filled. And that's where you get lost. We get caught in our grief and our stubbornness and we don't ask for help. We don't like to admit we need help. We try to keep a brave face and just move on. That's not healthy. It's just going to make you emotionally constipated and delay the release that you clearly need to have. That's why people have uncontrollable crying fits when people die. It's a, an attack on your emotional system. Like you have a nervous system, but you have an emotional system. And when you're traumatized by death, your body has a difficult time processing it and talking to someone and helping those thoughts be processed is only going to help you through it more. Counselors also understand the stages of death and they can help you with whatever stage you're in to process, absorb, and heal from that. Um, creating a keepsake, like maybe getting a tattoo, uh, designing their headstone, um, getting an a engraved urn, um, a photograph of your uh, that you really loved and engrave it at the bottom something that you can keep forever that you just look at it with love if it's making you sad I would wait um, I do recommend you know it's gonna be like that for a few weeks sometimes a few months before you can really remove things of that person but I feel unfortunately I feel it's better for the grief process to get their belongings out for the majority of their belongings out as early as possible and just keep the things that give you memories or mean something personal to you so that you're not overwhelmed and you don't have to throw it out you can put it in a closet you can put it in an attic but having it in your face is only going to delay your grieving process at the same time looking at photo albums and going back in memories can help you say goodbye as well you really got to gauge that to your emotional response if you are looking at photos and videos it's normal for you to tear up but if it's like a devastating sob and it devastates you for a few days and you get in this pocket of sadness you're not ready to be doing that stuff yet and give yourself some time visiting their graves um, you can find a good way to say goodbye um, this is good for kids, but it works for adults too, like those Chinese lanterns or the paper boats that you can release on water, tying a letter to a balloon, putting a message in a bottle and throwing it in the sea, releasing their ashes is all a really healthy way to do your goodbye in your way, on your terms when you're ready. Um, moving to a new house or new place is sometimes beneficial. If you just, everywhere you go in the house, it's just not helping you grow. You're, you're finding yourself in depression and you can't seem to get out of your funk. It's been a few weeks. I do really feel like it's beneficial to start over in a new place to give yourself that literal and physical restart. I had to do that when my fiance passed away. I could not live in the same place. It was like agony every corner every room had a memory in it and it was like constant flashbacks and it was so unhealthy for me and I just kept looking at their pictures and, and that you got to cut yourself off and it, it's got to be like a, a drug like you like if you're sending someone to rehab you wouldn't put, fill their suitcase through full of drugs you have to remove yourself from it and allow yourself to see life in this new because that's the truth that when someone dies you have a new life you're starting a new cycle and things will change and you have to grow with that change you can't stay stunted and too focused on the past and what was as hard as it is you got to keep looking forward you got to look forward as if they're with you because they are everything is energy they just can't talk back to you in the same way they're listening every time you talk to them i promise you they are listening release it when you're home alone and driving in your car they will hear you and just in some way they'll find a way to make sure that you know that they're hearing you through music through movement through some kind of connection just connect 
and be willing to see life as new.